going on gang welcome back to another king james video check this out so i have a bag of film right here and in this bag of film we have a bunch of different uh iso films so we have 400 iso we have 160 we have uh 800 iso all different isos and the reason why i brought that out of the fridge is because i wanted to make a video today talking and explaining how to properly choose the right iso for the type of light that's available so if you are a beginner in film photography or maybe you just picked up a film camera and you don't know what iso to shoot this video is for you gang so this is my Voigtlander Bessa R2A uh, before we start today's video I'm sending a huge SOS out there for anybody who can point me in a direction to where I can get this camera repaired so I brought this to the Philippines with me about halfway through the trip the shutter mechanism locked up the light meter inside still works everything kind of works you know well but the only thing is I can't trip the shutter button so if anybody can point me in a direction to get my Voigtlander Bessa R2A repaired I greatly appreciate that. All right, gang. So like I mentioned in the beginning, this is going to be a very kind of beginner tutorial if you're getting into film photography. When you first get started shooting film, one of the hardest things to learn and pick up on is what type of films to shoot. Uh, but second to that is the ISO and what film speeds you should shoot, because there are film speeds that are going to be more suitable towards daylight more abundant light photography and there are going to be other film stocks that are going to be much better shooting in low light so like night scenes for example or maybe indoors with a lot of artificial light uh, and if you choose the wrong film stock you might not get good results and ultimately that can kind of push you away from film because you might not just get the good results on your first try shooting film. I don't want that to happen to you guys because it definitely happened to me. And so we're going to talk about that today. And I'm going to show you guys and tell you guys about each of the ISO film stocks, what they're good for, and kind of the applications that you can use them in. Also, gang, we're about 2,000 or so subscribers away from 80k man so if you guys are new to this channel or if you guys are just getting into film photography consider hitting that subscribe button down below i have something huge planned for 100k let's get there gang let's see if we can do it but if you guys are ready to go let's just jump right into it grab your coffee grab some snacks if you got it and let's talk about this okay okay so before we actually start talking about the film isos the main thing you want to wrap your head around when it comes to selecting the right film iso for the type of light you're going to be shooting in is to understand film iso sensitivity throughout this video i'm going to be talking about iso and film speed Film speed and ISO are pretty much the exact same things. ISO is just the measurement in numbers and film speed refers to a fast or slow film speed. When I say slow film speeds, all I'm talking about are films that are less than 400 ISO because slower film speeds are gonna require you to have more light to expose the film. And that's because slow film speeds are less sensitive to light. On the contrary, on the other hand, it's the exact opposite. So when I talk about fast film speeds, I'm generally gonna be talking about 800 ISO and up. And what that means is fast film speeds are gonna be more sensitive to light. Okay, I hope that doesn't confuse anyone, but you need to instill that into your brain before we start. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the different ISO values and the different applications. The first one we have, folks, are ISOs between 25 and 100. Now, 100 ISO film is a slower film stock, which means it requires more light to expose the film. And this is why 100 ISO is a great film for sunny days. This is a great film for, you know, when there's no clouds in the sky and you have a lot of abundant light. And because this is a slower ISO film, it's a lot less sensitive to light, which means you need more abundant light to expose the film stock. So anything between 25 to 100 ISO you might need to shoot this on a bright sunny day save it for the days where there's no clouds in the sky and you have a lot of available light and a pro tip if you guys ever find yourself needing to shoot at like a large aperture like 1.4 or like f2 but it's super bright and sunny outside you can opt for a low ISO film like 100 ISO or even 50 ISO so that your shutter speeds are at bay and they're not super fast like 1 2000s or 1 4000s of a second 
Next up, we have 200 ISO film. 200 ISO is very similar to 100 in being that it's a slower film speed. But 200 ISO is a little bit more flexible than something like 100 and under. And the reason for that is because 200 ISO will get you through cloudy days. It'll get you through sunny days. It's going to get you through some shade situations. It's going to be perfectly fine in that setting. Uh, but for the most part, you want to be able to shoot 200 ISO when you still have a lot of abundant light. And that's why it's one of the more versatile film stocks, 200 ISO film. Now the next step up from 200 ISO is 400 ISO film. 400 ISO in theory is probably the most versatile ISO film out there. This means that it's good for cloudy weather, overcast, indoors, outdoors, sunny days. And I find myself shooting 400 ISO film about 90% of the time because it's going to be the most versatile out of the bunch. One area you might run into trouble with 400 ISO film is in low light photography. So if you're going to be shooting at night or if you're going to be shooting indoors where there's a lot of artificial, not abundant light, you might need to shoot something a little bit faster like 800 ISO, which is what we're going to be talking about next. When in doubt, shoot 400 ISO film. It's going to cover almost 90% of the applications that you are going to have if you're outdoors at least. Next up, we have 800 ISO. 800 ISO film is going to be considered our first fast speed film. Faster speed film means it's going to be more sensitive to light. And when a film is more sensitive to light, it means you can shoot it in a lot lower light situations. It picks up light a lot easier. This means that 800 ISO is a great film for low light photography, or even days where it's just rainy, dark, overcast, not a lot of light shining through the sun, maybe not even be poking out. It's a good day for 800 ISO film. Indoor photography is really good with 800 ISO film. Anytime you are in a low light situation, 800 ISO and above is what you're going to want to reach for because it's a faster film stock, which means it's more sensitive to light. I'll be honest with you guys, if I'm not shooting 400 ISO film, I'm usually shooting 800 ISO film. And the reason for that is because it's very versatile. You can still overexpose it to 400 and get good results. Or if you need to, you can even push it, which is what we're going to talk about next with 1600 ISO. Okay folks, now this is where things get a little bit confusing. The next ISO film we're going to be talking about is 1600 ISO. Now on the market, at least for what I know, I might, I might be missing something, but there aren't any 1600 ISO native film stocks, meaning there are no film stocks on the market that are 1600 ISO. Not anymore at least. There used to be Fuji Natura 1600 and Superior 1600, but since then those film stocks have been removed from the market and a lot of people are left with having to push their film to achieve 1600 ISO. 1600 ISO is super fast, which means again, it's more sensitive to light. And this means it's gonna be great for low light events, low light photography, low light everything. But the problem is again, there is no native 1600 ISO film. So a way photographers kind of go around this issue is by pushing their film. They use a technique called pushing stops. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna take a 400 ISO film or even 800 ISO film, and you're gonna treat and meter that film stock just like it were to be a 1600 ISO film. Now, what are the benefits of shooting 1600 ISO film? Well, the first benefit is you get more light. So if you are in a super low light situation and you only have 400 ISO film, you can push it to 1600. That's one of the easiest ways to get more film sensitivity. Secondly, a lot of people will push black and white 400 ISO film to 1600 to get more natural contrast. Uh, when you push film, generally, there's gonna be two things that come with it, added contrast, and also added grain. And you wanna keep that in mind as well. The higher the film ISO, the more grain you're gonna have on your image. So it can come down to just personal taste, but the main reason why people push film is to be able to shoot the film in low light situations. And last but not least folks, we have 3200 ISO film. Now surprisingly, there are 3200 ISO films on the market. P3200 from Kodak, and then you also have Delta 3200 from Ilford. In my opinion, 3200 ISO films should only be used if you absolutely need light sensitivity on your film stocks. If you don't need it, go for something like 1600 or 800, because 3200 being such a high ISO, generally what you're gonna get along with it is 
very enhanced grain. So the grain structures on some of these films are going to be nice. I personally prefer P3200 over Delta, but regardless of which one you shoot, 3200 ISO is going to give you a lot of grain, which can be good for some people, but for most applications, a lot of grain isn't going to look good. Whew. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the ISO film stocks explained. I hope it wasn't too confusing. And I know that it was a mouthful, but the main takeaway that you guys want to have when you're selecting an ISO film is do I need more light or do I need less light? If you know you're going to be shooting in daylight or even just cloudy weather, go for a slower ISO film. But if you are going to be shooting in low light situations, you might want to reach for something that is a little bit of a higher ISO, something like 800 and up, or maybe even 400 and up. All right, gang, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys learned anything new, please feel free to drop a like down below. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. We got a ton more film photography videos coming. Uh, and I really like making these for the photographers that may have questions about film photography. So. Thank you for tuning in, man. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, the notes again. Whew.